Hi all, so as promised, I will show you a few of the workflows for creating some of the features of this casing. Um, so it's a two-part casing. If you have a look here, you have a cut list of a lower and an upper. Um, I'm just going to backtrack to the beginning and demonstrate very quickly. What I did here is I've created half of a sketch with a footprint of roughly um, an A4 size. All right, and it's got these gentle curves in it. Exit that. Then I've added fillets of 18 millimeters, and then I've added a chamfer, and the chamfer is um, an uneven chamfer. So it's seven and a half millimeters tall and five and a half millimeters deep. And then I've added a split line. So the split line is um, the new part. Just to show you the sketch, it's just a line on the front plane, as you can see, and then um, the split, split line, I'll demonstrate how to do that. So let's put another sketch on the front plane. And this time I'm not going to dimension it, um, just to illustrate the, the process. So once you've got your sketch, you go to this curves command and you say split line. And then you can select, um, make sure it's on projection, you can select any number of faces. So I can go through just those two, for instance, and it'll only split those two. If I split this third one, it'll also split that part. So you'll see that it split that one, that one, and then this back one as well. Um, so that really depends on what you want to do, what you want to split. So I'm going to delete that um, and the sketch because I don't need it. Right, so the split line here is at about 125 millimeters, and then I've added some draft. So what I've done here is I've added the drafts in um, from that split line. Um, so I've selected the split line and then used that. So if we go to the split line, you can see what's happened. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that to you, but you can get the direction to go one way or the other. So there's a draft going upwards of half a degree and another one going down. And then I've put in another split line, and this one is important. So let's have a look at it. Um, let's go to the sketch. Uh, okay, so I've got uh, a straight line in the middle and on the two ends, and then I've got a spline. And very importantly, the spline joins the straight line at a tangent at both ends. Okay, so and then I've just mirrored it. And these are at 165, so I've added some dimensions, 165, 256, and 300. And that's 5 and 7, I think it should, that should be 7.5. Um, no, I'm going to leave it because I know this works, but that should, be, I think it should be um, that dimension. So the way I've designed this is that this, these smaller end lines um, intersect with that split line by just a small amount. Okay, and you'll see why later. So if we have a look at this cutout, um, you'll see it ends just about there, and then there's that flat bit. Now, the next one I want to um, place on the underside, so I'll just show you what that does, and then we'll go back and just model it. So it's that one there. I'm not sure what that sketch is. Ah, okay, so that's the sketch repeated. So I think we can delete that. So th that one there is a repeat actually of this sketch. And let me show you how to do that um, because you don't want to waste time. So I want to repeat this sketch on this plane here, which is the top plane as far as I know. Yes, it's the top plane. So I'm going to make a mistake first. I'm going to say, um, let's just see if we can't grab it. No, we can't. So we edit the sketch. No, we don't need to. You can just select the sketch and say Control C. And then I could put it on the top plane um, or the front plane. So I'm going to put it on the, the front plane by mistake, control V. And you'll see it's put the, the sketch on that plane. Let's go and edit that sketch. And you'll see it's put the dimensions in, but it hasn't um, located this uh, sketch according to a center point. I can just drag this out and then relocate it. What it should also have done is, is, is brought across all of the relations. What we don't need is any of the dimensions, or well, maybe the 165 would be useful, but we don't need these ones. That's because I want this shape here to face the other direction. Now, there are two ways of doing it. 
One is you could mirror it. Uh, the other one is you could just drag this one up like this. So that's not a problem. And then I want that, that end to join another part. But this sketch, as I said, is on the wrong plan. So let's exit the sketch, right click it, go to the second button here, edit sketch plan. And here we can change the sketch to the top plan. Right, so there's my sketch on the top plane. I'm going to edit it. Uh, edit sketch. And then I'm just going to, in 3D, I'm just going to drag this across to that point there. Um, and then I'm going to see if I can drag this part out like that. Okay, if you get sort of a strange rotate symbol here, and then um, the what what will happen is you'll get, you'll select a point possibly, and you'll get this rotate symbol. It's not going to show it now. Anyways, if that happens and you're getting um, and you're getting the spline sign showing, what all you need to do is drag one of these points out so that you can grab this line on its own. Um, I can't replicate that error right now, but that is what's happening. So I'm going to drag this one down. You can see all of the relations are in place. I can't drag this around, and I now just want to put in a dimension between here and here, quite small say 1.5, another dimension, I need another dimension between that point and that point, which I can now maybe just make a little bit smaller. All right, the reason I'm de re duplicating the sketch is because that sketch creates a cutout with five line segments, and I want to do exactly the same on, on this side as well. I want this also to have five line segments. What I really want is I want that point there to correspond roughly with that point here um, on that sketch there. So let's let's increase this to 240 and see if that does the trick. That is, I'm going to leave it like that. That's roughly okay. All right, so we're going to exit the sketch and then we're going to, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use that sketch to go curves, spit line, and I want to select that face and we should then get a split face. So we've got a split, splitting of the face and a splitting of the face. That is just a splitting of the face. If you do a section through this item, you'll see that it still is a solid. So what this allows me to do is to go to the surfaces command and use the delete face command. And under delete face, there are three different options. In this case, we just want to use delete. I'll show you what the others do much later. I'm going to select these three. And once I delete them, you'll see I now have an empty box. It's no longer a, a solid. Um, and now the magic comes into place. So we can do a lofted surface. Sometimes you can do a filled surface with this, but it's not going to work. So lofted surface. And here you have to be um, a little bit cautious. You can't select individual line segments like this and then hope that they will connect. What SolidWorks is looking for is a set of curves and another set of curves. So if you right click inside here and you say Selection Manager, you'll get this little dialog box with different options. So you can have a group, a region, a single uh, open loop, and then a closed loop. Um, or you can select, I think, a single standard one but we want the group item and i'm going to select this first edge here it might give me okay so it's giving me um a tangent continuity option but it's going to go in the wrong direction if i select that it'll it, it'll select the wrong one i'm going to try um see if i can't fool this or just get get it to do what i want by starting at the other end uh, okay in this case it's not going to give me the continuity but that would have speeded speeded my workflow up a little bit because then I could have just selected once. All right, so say, okay, so you've got one open group. We need to do that again. So let's say selection manager. Let's try and see if we can get this. There we go. And that tangent um, continuity button, if you click it, should give you all of the curves you want. And you say, okay, there we go. I've got two groups. Um, and at the moment, they're not joining up. That's because these two uh, points at the end here are not lined up. Just drag one across. Seems not to want to do it. Um, anyways, let's see if we can get this to work. Um, 
I'm going to add in some guide curves here. Ah, okay, so the guide curves in this case were essential. Um, it's not always the case. I'm sure there's a good reason for why that is happening. So what you've got here is a very neat transition from that um, fillet, which is at a chamfer, um, through sort of a slight twist to this kind of chamfer flat end on the one side. And then to finish this off, we can say knit surface and then just select all of those surfaces. Make sure that you have create solid on and say, OK, and now you have a um, let's just do it across. Now we have a, a solid again. All right. And then from here, you can just mirror this. Right. So I don't need to show you how to do that. Um, OK, so I've actually duplicated these items. I'm actually I'm going to delete them now because I don't want to mess with my model. Hopefully I don't, I don't manage to do that too much. Let's see. Okay, so I, I've just uh, suppressed my features that I originally created. I'm going to see if I can mirror. Right, so the mirror wants to know which body and it's not that one, but this new one. And I'm you've used the front plane. Okay, so let's see if we can get the rest of us to work. It seems like most of it. All right, so that's where we got to this. Uh, oh, sorry, the surface cut. I'm not going to show you how to do that. But just a quick interesting thing is if you create a, a sketch on the um, so in this case, it's the front plane, I think yes, the front plane. If you create a sketch on that, you can then use that sketch. If we show it, you can use that sketch, you can use that sketch to create a plane, um, which is normal to the end of the sketch, which is what I've done there. And you say, OK, I'm not going to say OK, because I've already got one. So that's that plane. On that plane, you can you can place another sketch, which is what I've done here, which has got a sort of a, a convex curve w leading on to some um, chamfers on the end. And then I've done a surface sweep and then cut surface cut with that stuff I've explained already. So that's how I got that 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 cuts out in the middle for the for the handle recess. And then let's go to this handle handle insert and just show you how that works. So I'm going to roll back to that. And let's go across to the actual handle. What I've done here is I've taken um, let's just roll it forward. Okay, so that's pretty much what I want. Um, so I've, I've used the basis of this, which I've rolled back to the very beginning, I think somewhere around there. I've used that basis to create this um, third configuration. And then in the sketch, what you can do in the sketch, which is which is also really, really useful and powerful, is you can make each dimension fit a particular configuration. So if you click on these items here, you can say all configurations, which is the standard or this configuration. Or if you click on a dimension, um, on the side here, you also get that option. Okay, so I can have the same sketch working in three different configurations, having different dimensions. That's what I've done with these two dimensions. And I've lengthened this end so that I've got a longer landing with which to cut the handle away from the actual item. The second thing I've done is I've put the draft in, which is um, a reverse a reverse draft. Uh, I'm not sure where I've done that. I think it's this one here. Um, so I've, done, I've cut some profiles. Uh, I've put this draft in. You can see it's going outwards instead of inwards. So um, that's because I'm going to cut away. And then I've added some major fillets. And that's all I... That's all I want, because if I add more details, those, those details will come through on the cut part of it. So if you leave your configuration in this state, then it'll bring through that, um, that's spelt incorrectly, but it'll bring through that configuration into, into this item. So the way to get that handle to come through is to say insert part, go and find that part, right? So there we can see that's that configuration. And yours should have all of these items ticked. You can untick all of them because all we want here is the solid bodies. We don't want the surface bodies or any of these other items. 
And then also make sure that locate part has is ticked at the bottom. And then don't click inside the graphics area, rather click on the OK button. That means it'll bring through that part into, it's not showing here, but it'll bring it through on the plane at the origin that you that you first created it at, and that'll correspond with this origin. And then I want to move this up so I can see that my Y direction is up. So I'm going to type in here 200 just to show you what happens. There we go, let's put it at that height. That's too, um, too high. Let's go with, I think this is supposed to be 183. Roughly that's okay. And say, okay, okay, so the two things you can do here, you can rotate as well. So you can translate and rotate one after the other. I just need to translate, that means move. And here I've made sure that the handle is smaller than the um, the body by about two millimeters. So when I cut away the one with the other, I've left, I'm left with a, a wall thickness. And then to cut this away, you say combine. Um, and combine has in it three different options. So you can add, combine, subtract, or common. So make sure it's on, on subtract. The main body is the one you want to keep, and then the body you want to subtract with is the one you've brought in. Say OK, and voila, you've got that cut away. All right, so I've added a few other items in here. Uh, no, they're not added, added just yet. Um, so I'm going to delete these in the hopes that I can get my model to continue as I originally had it. Let's see. A ah, quick backtrack, um, what, what else you need to do is this move face, so let's just roll back to that part. Once you've brought the handle in, um, before you cut the body or the, the casing with the handle, you need to use the move face item. What move face does is it allows you to offset particular surfaces of this, this item. So you can't scale this item, you have to move face. So we can select um, particular items. So go to surfaces, it's move face should be, I don't know if it's in here. I think it might be under features. Uh, if we can't find it, we just say move face, click on the eye, wait for it to tell you where it is. There it is, it's under mold tools, okay? So move face allows you to select certain faces and we're gonna offset them by a small amount, just 0.3. This is to give enough space between these items. And I don't know, I might be able to, um, let's just select them all and see if we can't deselect some by hitting the control button. And I think this bottom face, there we go. Okay, so I've got them all selected and I did that very quickly by just, um, using one of these buttons and then deselecting the ones I didn't want. And if we say, okay, all right. So there's actually, there's a bit of a problem because one of these, a couple of these are, are duplicated. Let's just clear selections. So I'm gonna right click straight away and say, select tangency. There we go, that's actually easier. And then right click again and say, select tangency. And that should do it. No, that hasn't done it. Clear selection, so I think you've got to right click, select tangency, and then you've got to shift right click or control right click, select tangency. Nope, also hasn't done it. Uh, right, so we're only going to be able to do one at a time, so we're going to say select tangency, and then we're going to have to select these one at a time. Sure, there's some trick to get this to select quicker. When I find it, I'll tell you what it is. And we say offset by 0.3. So it's actually grown this part um, 0.3 millimeters only along those faces. And then you can um, combine, subtract. Okay, so add that in before you do your model. Ah, brilliant. And um, so then the cut extrude, okay, so let me show you that cut extrude, and I think that's about as much as I, no, there's one other thing I need to show you. So what I've done here is I've created a sketch on the top plane, I've offset from, from, from the indent. So if we go back to, if we roll back, I've created a sketch on that plane, 
um, sketch and then I've done an indent or um, offset by two millimeters and I've gone inwards and then I've drawn a longish line um, construction line straight and then I've just deleted um, in fact you're going to need to delete any curves as well so you just want these straight lines uh, and then we can just extend that line and that line and then exit it and then the other thing you can do which I haven't shown you before which is also a fantastic feature on my front plane I'm going to put a sketch and in this sketch I'm going to tell SolidWorks which direction I want um, that cutout to go in so it normally goes normal to I want it to go in a different direction so this line could be anywhere it could be starting from the middle um, but I'm going to just put it close to where I've in fact, I'm going to locate it and I'm going to give it um, an angle using my favorite angle dimension tool, which is this one. Let's make it about seven degrees um, and that's almost black. Get it to locate. Okay, so it might need a dimension or two other than this. Uh, 50. doesn't matter what length it is, in fact. I think what we need here is just for that to merge with that one, make pierce, sorry. All right, so with those two in place, let's just see where that sketch is, the first one. Um, yes, that is it. So I'm going to get that one there to cut extrude. So go to Features, Extruded Cut. And instead of doing the standard blind, I'm going to go to this little arrow here, which says direction of extrusion. And I'm going to say I want to go through that one. And then you just increase the dimension here until it until it cancels. I mean, this is going to go too far. You can see it's cutting through both parts, and I don't want it to do that, but I'll show you how to fix it. But there, I've gone too far, so let's go 85 or 80. Might be good enough uh, for now. All right, and then... I can very easily just double click on this, click on it, nope, it's not that one, it's this one here, right, and so let's increase that to 8 degrees and see if that helps, okay, so it's going to black out now because the cut extrude hasn't gone, it's gone too far, so let's just bring it back, 60 seems to do it, that's good enough. Okay, so there we go. We've got a new, very neat cutout. You can put some um, fillets in here and then you can mirror it and off you go. And then I've done a few other things. So I'm not going to do all of this again. I'm just going to delete all of this lot and hope, hope I get um, back to my model without problems. Ah, there we go. Fantastic. Okay, so the last step, once you've got everything done... Um, um, I have in fact, uh, and I haven't done it here, so let's try, I have. Okay, so what, here you can see that I've shelled these two. The way I've done that is, um, let's go back, roll back to this one. So that one there, all you do is you hide one of these items. They're in the cut list. The cut list would have been created earlier, so I'm going to hide the upper, I think. And they won't be named upper and lower. Um, and then you simply do the, the shell command. Because you now have two parts. So let's make that two millimeters. Let's say OK. All right. So um, once you've got this as far as you want it to go, as far as the detailing goes in inside your multi-body part, that's what this is. Um, this is not going to work, I know, because we're going to have a contradiction. So let's just delete that one there. There we go, and that fillet is faulty, but I'm not going to fix it for now. So we have two parts now, um, and these will say split one and split two. You can rename them by just clicking once inside here and dragging out and then typing in a new name. So, all right, so it doesn't like that, but 
rename them at this point and then we're going to um, save these bodies out as separate bodies um, so go to insert again this is where all the good commands are insert and you go to features and you go right down to the bottom and you say save bodies um, it's going to ask you for an assembly file say okay and then you need to select these two items here and make sure that you don't have the consume bodies on uh, selected sorry button selected and you should now be able to save I don't know if it'll do it because there might be a contradiction but if you've done this the first time it'll save it'll ask you where you want to save them it'll say fail to save document in my case because we have a contradiction but it'll ask you where you want to save it and what name you want to save it as but it'll default to to those actual names as you see them there so let's try one more time it hasn't done it but that doesn't matter um, you should be able to get that right. I mine's just contradicting because I've already done it. And then I'll just show you what one of those looks like. So here's the upper. You can see that it's brought through a single body, no history, but it has done everything that I've asked it to do inside the multi-body part. So that's how you do it. Thanks for watching.